Hi, Ken1171 here, and in this video, I want to show you a new tool I'm creating for Pulsar 12 that is dedicated to editing materials, uh, figure materials more precisely. So here I have Hivewire Dawn figure and her default materials. Let's take a look on them. And uh, this is going to be a good example because Dawn was created before Pulsar 11. So her materials are for Firefly. Uh, they don't work well at all with, uh, uh, with Superfly. And the reason being that, first of all, it's, this shader is too complicated. Second, we have an invalid uh, node here. You can see it's invalid because it shows with the dotted line, which is probably what's causing uh, renders to show her as black, as it shows in the preview here. So. If you wanted to fix this, you would have to rework the whole thing. Um, what I want to do here is first, I want to remove all the shader nodes, leaving only the texture maps like this one, like uh, this one, and I can't even find where the rest is. Basically, I want the diffuse, the bump, and the specular. And uh, as you can see, hunting for them here would take a lot of time and Dawn has a lot of skin materials, so like nine of them just for skin. So it would take a long time. It would be tedious. I thought, what if I create a tool that helps uh, automating this kind of thing, not only for Dawn, but other figures as well, uh, where materials were not meant for Superfly and I have plenty of them for V4. Um, how can I make this easier? So I came up with a tool called the Skin Edit. Here it is. And I have pref, uh, pref, uh, profiles for uh, Dawn, Dawn, Dusk, La Femme, La Home, and Vicky4. Uh, I can make more later on. Those are text files that are easy to, to edit and create your own if you want to. So let's go back to materials and look at that. Uh, look at this here. Uh, first of all, uh, the tool doesn't work with matte sounds because, uh, like I said, uh, Dawn has, uh, just for skin, has nine of them. So if I had to edit this one by one, it would take a long time. That's what I don't want. So what I did here is that I work with groups of matte sounds, like all the skin, all uh, lashes. Dawn has actually two sets. Uh, fingernail and toenails, the inner mouth and the eyes. So I have kind of uh, grouped the five main material zone uh, groups that every figure has. And default is skin. That's, let's start with that. The program already comes with defaults. And uh, these are the ones I use in my renders. Those are my, uh, my preference. And they handle Firefly and Superfly, depending if you have a poser surface or physical surface. Uh, it handles both of them, if you have both or mixed in any order, and these are the defaults. If I uh, keep the defaults and click uh, Apply, it's going to make a mess. Why? Because I have all these uh, shader nodes here, and some of them are even invalid, like I showed before. And this is going to try its best to make it work, but it won't. So first step I want to do is remove all the shader nodes and leave only the texture maps. And guess what? Remove shader nodes button here does that with one click. Just wait and see. That's the first step. Okay, now I have uh, um, the texture maps uh, here. Because I have removed so many nodes, they're kind of scattered, but that's okay. Um, now I have only the maps. That's a good starting point. But like most things made for, for Firefly, they apply things to the alternate diffuse and alternate specular. And as you can see, Superfly doesn't like that. It doesn't, it doesn't like it because, first of all, diffuse uh, value is set to zero. So, yeah, that's not going to work. But the thing is, once I remove the mass with the shader nodes, I can finally apply my default, and if you look at this, it's going to rewire. Uh, Dawn looks completely different now. I'm going to refresh um, the shader nodes, and it, 
you, if you look at it now, it has rewired the connections to the defaults I use in my renders that look good in Superfly. Uh, first of all, the previews is not black anymore or like uh, lit as it was before I applied my defaults. And uh, this is what it looks like now. Let's do a quick render to see the results. As you can see, much better than before, no longer black. It looks like very natural. And you can edit this from now. Like, for example, you can control here the skin tone. If I want her to be more pale, I um, added, added the, the diffuse color and look, she looks more pale now. If I want her to have a darker complexion, I can do that just with one controlling and applies globally to all matte zones that are related to the skin. Notice I'm not touching the fingernails or the inner mouth or the eyes, lashes. I'm only working with skin. Now, um, let's say I want the skin to be a little shinier. So I'm going to change 0.1 to 0.3 on the specular uh, value and apply. And again, gets a shinier skin. As a bonus, I added a little lipstick, but you can edit it out if you don't like it. That's just in the defaults you get for granted. Let's go to the nails now. All right, nail, I have a red default that you can change to any color that's gonna apply to all material zones up, uh, assigned to fingernails and toenails. And if you look at them now, I'm gonna apply the defaults it changes both of them as one. So again, I'm not working with matte zones, I'm working with uh, material groups. Next, I need to open her mouth to be able to show this next part. So let's select the jaw, open the mouth. As you can see, it looks like it was before I applied the defaults on the skin. This kind of looks like the lit, and that's because, let's select something there. Here it is. Um, Firefly materials are using alternate diffuse and specular, and uh, this doesn't work with Superfly. So let's switch to inner mouth. Uh, Dawn has like uh, five different material, four different mat zones for this, and I'm gonna apply my default with one click, and boom. Everything is fixed with one click. I can close her mouth now. Seeing is believing. And now the eyelashes. By default, um, this figure's lashes are kind of reddish. And I, I prefer if they were black. So I change here to lashes. Remember, you can see here, but Dawn has two sets of eyelashes. So uh, again, this doesn't work with matte zones. It works with groups. Um, that my default is black. So if I apply it now, you'll see, okay, the lashes are now black. And finally, the eyes. If you look at the eyes, after I've removed the shader nodes, I end up with nothing here. Um, and I could switch to eyes here, and but it would make sense. If you look at the material zones we have for eyes, we have the eye surface, the eye whites, the iris, the lacrimals, the and the pupil, each one of those will need different materials and very specific settings. So I couldn't make one set of numbers that would work for all of them. So what I did is here, you have a one click solution again, the eye preset, you click that and boom. Reflections are added to the eye surface and so on. Everything is set up um, for my defaults for eye materials. If you look at the render now, Looks much better. Okay, if we um, can close the two now, and um, I have a complete set of materials applied to the to the figure in seconds, and everything was fixed, cleaned up, and fixed in just a few seconds. But let me let's let's uh, restore the default materials to uh, how it was before. We're back to how, where we started. I want to show one next button. Let's open the tool again, go back to materials. You don't have to be here. I just want to show you what happens to the materials when we do those things. Uh, so make sure I have the right preset for the figure. And no matter what's selected 
there in 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 um, at the group selection, what I have a button here called Apply All, which is going to apply all this uh, defaults with one button click. Let's do that now. See, it first removed all shader nodes, cleaned up the mess. You could see it here in real time, and uh, applied all that I showed you before in one click. How cool is that? Once you're done with that, you can go back and edit the materials uh, by group. For example, the, most, the one I want to edit the most is the skin. For example, I want to edit the skin from the values it has now and not from defaults. You see this button here that looks kind of blue now? This is a toggle button. It's using defaults now. If I disable it, it turns gray. Um, you will notice that uh, all the parameters will change to pick whatever is on the figure right now. Well, it was the same as before because I just applied defaults, so defaults and what she has now are the same. But if I change the color, for example, just for an extreme example, I make her blue. Um, and how cool is that? I did all that with one click. Over nine material zones. Um, if you enable defaults now, you'll see that the color goes back to default. And if I disable, it picks whatever is on the scene. This is great for when I want to um, edit materials based on what I have on the scene and not some predefined defaults. If I want to make the skin shinier, I can make like specular value on the skin to 0.3. Now it's shinier and so on and so forth. Uh, you, if you have uh, superfly materials, like a, a physical surface root node, you can still share the diffuse color and edit the roughness and, and subsurface scattering uh, from the superfly materials here. Those are the ones that affect skin. And uh, that's about it in a nutshell. You can, uh, you can do all this to the, all the figures I have presets for, and new ones I'm going to create later. And that's what I wanted to show you. Thank you.